a homecoming Saturday at Starkville, Mississippi in what will be the first home night game of the season for Mississippi State. The Bulldogs have won their last nine homecoming games and look to build momentum heading into this year's Egg Bowl. Saturday night football from Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi. Bulldogs taking the field. They host the Abilene Christian Wildcats. Terrific to have you with us on this Saturday night from Starkville, along with former Georgia quarterback Hudson Mason. I'm Mark Neely. Dr. Jerry Punch down on the field. We'll check in with Doc shortly. Hudson, it would be very easy for Bulldog fans to already be looking ahead yeah. to Thanksgiving night's matchup in the Egg Bowl against Ole Miss. But... They're going to make their 10th consecutive bowl game. Mississippi State's got to win out. That starts tonight against Abilene Christian. And remember, Mark, Ole Miss is on their bye week right now heading into the Egg Bowl. So uh, they've got the leg up, an enormous leg up when it mm -hmm. comes to prep time and recovery. And, and so that makes it all the more imperative for Mississippi State tonight. Get off to a fast start, get points off possessions, and really rip the belief out of Abilene Christian. Your starters need to be sitting by halftime. I think Bulldog fans want to see that passing game kick it up a notch tonight. That begins with the transfer quarterback, yeah. Tommy Stevens. Yeah, Tommy Stevens got off to a rough start. He's been dealing with some banged up injuries, but he's finally 100% healthy. And I think for this offense to take the next step where they want to go the next two games, it's going to come specifically in the passing game. And that's what I want to see tonight out of Tommy. I want to see him make throws, take care of the football, throw into tight, confined spaces, and really throw with confidence and throw with accuracy and try to put some good stuff on tape heading into the Egg Bowl. Tommy Stevens and the Bulldogs facing Abilene Christian. They're an FCS team out of the Southland Conference, and they run a two-quarterback system on offense with Luke Anthony and Samaj Davis. This is by design. You're a former quarterback, yeah. Hudson. What do you think of them using the two-quarterback system? Well, traditionally, I'm in favor of when you got two quarterbacks, you really have no quarterback. But what makes this unique is because Luke has a certain skill set as a thrower, and Samaj has a different skill set as a runner. And so I think the challenge tonight for Abilene is how do you use those guys interchangeably with, without being too predictable? Let's bring in Dr. Jerry Punch down on the field. Doc, uh, Kylan Hill got a little banged up at the end of the game against Alabama. What's his status for tonight? That's one of the big concerns for Bulldog fans all week because Kylan Hill left that late against in the Alabama game with an upper body injury. Now here's the good news. He practiced this week, and we are told he will play tonight, probably even start. He needs just 95 yards to move into the top 10 all-time among Bulldog rushers. In fact, head coach Joe Moorhead says he's a small back skill in a big back body, which means he's elusive enough to run around you unless he decides he wants to pound you, which makes him even that much more fun to watch. Definitely one of the top backs, not only in the SEC, but in the nation. Look forward to seeing him tonight. Abilene Christian won the toss and deferred, so Mississippi State will receive. Dedrick Thomas, Brian Cole back deep. And this is Thomas from about the three-yard line. Dedrick hits the 20, 25 to the sideline. He's run out of bounds up near the 30. And that's where Tommy Stevens and this Mississippi State offense will start tonight. Wearing the black uniforms, by the way. We'll tell you more about those as the night goes on. They're called the selfless 
uniforms. We're wearing the black unis tonight, and there's a good look at the transfer, Tommy Stevens. Yeah, Tommy Stevens coming off his best performance, running the ball versus Alabama last week, 96 yards. you got to figure the quarterback design runs will be a huge part of this offense again tonight. Come out with three receivers up top. Kylan Hill in the backfield. And there's a carry for Hill off right tackle. A scamper under the 33-yard line to pick up close to six yards on first down. Yeah, how about this kid, Hill? I mean, leading the SEC in rushing yards. He's the only player in the conference with over 1,000 rush yards with also 10 touchdowns. He's not a one-trick pony. He's good at pass protection. They're going to use him on a lot of different ways tonight. He's going to get a second carry. Makes a nice move. Stays on his feet. First down all the way towards midfield. A spin move. And he's in the Abilene Christian territory before he's brought down at the 49th by linebacker Jack Gibbons in a 19-yard game. And what you're going to see here is a guy in Hill that leads the SEC in yards after contact. That's the job. Make the safety miss right there in the yards after contact. That's why he's so good. 621 yards. That's amazing. 621 yards after contact. Coming into this game, we just added to that on that run. Here's Stevens with time, fires, and it's Farad Green. Did not come up with an incomplete. And that's been part of the problem this year for Mississippi State's passing game is drops. You go back and watch the Kansas, Kansas State game drop for picks. And, you know, I think as the commander-in-chief of this offense, Tommy Stevens would say, hey, you know what, I want to be more concise. I want to get through my progressions. But he's got to have some receivers catch the balls and step up as well for him. It's a state offense averaging about 180 yards through the air. That's third worst in the SEC. Only Kentucky and Vandy fewer pass yards per game. And here's Kylan Hill barreling forward for a first down all the way to the 37 of Abilene Christian. And he runs for 11 yards there. Well, Mississippi State loves to run the power play. And look at them pull this tackle here. And really no contact within the first part and the second part of that defensive front for Abilene Christian. They've got to get some more movement, maybe move some guys along that defensive line. You can't stand still against this big, bulky offensive line of Mississippi State. Stevens going to hand off at this time. Abilene Christian is right there, and that's going to be a loss of a yard or two. Timmy San Kuyatsimi, defensive in there. Also to help out on the stop, number 98. It's funny, you look at this defensive line for Abilene Christian. They create a lot of havoc. They got four or five guys. You just mentioned Kuyat Simi. What about number 50, Bright Igawaro? I mean, you look at their TFLs, 11 TFLs, 7 TFLs. They're very disruptive. A loss of two on that first place. Second down and 12. They fake to Hill, and that's caught by Dedrick Thomas, but he's immediately tackled. That's Brandon Richmond, safety, number two that came up to make that lick. Only gained about a yard, but now it's third and long, third and 11. Their go-to guy here on third down this season has been Dedrick Thomas, who just caught that ball, and on third and 11, right? Here's a guy who has 20 catches this season. 16 of them have gone for third, uh, first downs. That's green in motion. So now three receivers to the left of Stevens. Here comes a blitz off the edge. Stevens steps up, throws too high. Should have been picked off with right off Daniel Dua, number eight, who didn't see the overthrow. Well, Tommy's got a crossing right here to Dedrick, and he just lets it go a little too early. Dedrick's not looking, and you usually want to throw that about 18 yards. You'd like to have it caught about 18 yards on the opposite hash, and those are some of the miscues that have plagued this Mississippi State passing game this year. And look, they're a run-first team, okay? They're never going to be a team that wants to throw up for 300, 400 yards a game, but it's really about being more balanced and converting on third down, and that's where Unfortunately, this offense has mightily struggled this year. Uh, that first drive box down just inside the Abilene Christian 40. Here's the Tucker Day punt trying to pin him in. It's going to go out of bounds around the 10. They'll mark it out at the 12. 26-yard punt for Day, but gets it inside the 20. What a big opening uh, stop for Abilene Christian. Absolutely. Kylan Hill was had a couple of big runs on that possession, that first possession for State. With the drive stalls just inside the 40. And here comes Abilene Christian. We told you about this two-quarterback system 
the starter is Luke Anthony. He's the junior out of the Dallas area. Yeah, three interceptions for Luke last week, by far and away his worst performance. And this offense has had a had a problem with fast starts. They've been held scoreless in the first quarter in their last five out of seven ball games. So even on this drive, you don't necessarily you want to get points in a perfect roll, but at least try to flip the field position. It's a handoff, and this is Samaj Davis, who is the other part of the quarterback equation. Now we were told by Adam Durrell, the head coach and his staff. Hey, look for Samaj Davis to not only play quarterback, but line up at a lot of different spots. They do that right out of the yeah, shoot. Yeah, they're banged up at receiver. Both their tight ends are out tonight, so they're going to get creative in how they use his athleticism. You saw there on the speed sweep. He picked up 10 yards, leaves the field. A first down for the Wildcats from the 22. Anthony to throw. That ball's deflected in the air and lands incomplete. Batted around at the line. It'll be second down. The well, defense alignment are taught. You can't get to the quarterback and get your big balls up. That's what this defensive line has done. And, you know, Lee Autry out due to suspension. A couple other players out. Nathan Pickering getting a start tonight, number 22. Second down and 10. Anthony. Double pass. Double pass. Looking. Davis, he throws. And out of reach, incomplete at the 40. Looking for Tracy James. They didn't know if Tracy James, their main back, was going to play tonight. He's a bit banged up. Good to see him out there. And they talked about being aggressive. They have nothing to lose. This is their last game of the season, and you see a double pass there. Mississippi State better be alert and on their P's and Q's defensively all night. I expect Abilene Christian to go for it on fourth down. They might pull out a fake punt, a trick play right there. But here's a third and long. And this is where these defensive ends will peel off and rush on you. Anthony feeling the heat, being chased. He's going to be sacked back inside the 10 by Chauncey Rivers. That's a team leading three and a half sacks now for Rivers. And I thought this was an area you can see they run a TE stunt. And Chauncey Rivers just doesn't get touched. And that ultimately is going to be the biggest challenge for this offensive line of Abilene Christian. They've got good skill position players, some guys, some former defensive one transfers, but the difference between FCS and FBS is the line of scrimmage. And in this conference, it's, it's a line of scrimmage game and it's a line of scrimmage battle. That sack cost of 13 yards to Laurier. Simon Laurier had to kick out of his own end zone. And he gets it up across the 45, but it's going to be great starting field position for Mississippi State on their second drive inside Wildcat territory. Joe Moorhead's tenure as state head coach actually began against the Southland Conference team, Stephen F. Austin, 63-6. State was the final. He's playing another Southland Conference team here tonight. And Abilene Christian head coach Adam Dorrell in his third season in Abilene after winning three national championships at the Division II level for his alma mater, Northwest Missouri State. 45 straight wins at one point was 45-0. I don't care what level of football you're at. That's, that's impressive. Second drive of the night for the Bulldogs. They begin at the 44 of Abilene Christian, and Hill is hit in the backfield and dropped. Tackled for a loss by Cole Burgess, one of the senior leaders at defensive tackle, but he is slow to get up. And yeah, that's now nine and a half TFLs for him on the season, and a big loss for the Wildcats if he goes out. That interior part of that defensive line with Burris and Bright. They are, I'm telling you, they are as good as it gets at the FCS level of getting movement, interior movement. And I thought it was interesting. Joe Moorhead said in our meetings with him this week that he noticed the same thing on film. I mean, you're talking about a combination between Bright and Cole of 15 and a half tackles for loss of those two interior three techniques. One of the captains for the Wildcats down will step aside. Cole Burgess did make it off the field for Abilene Christian. Looked like he got his left ankle rolled upon by Kylan Hill while making that tackle for loss. Yeah, just a little friendly fire there. He was able to walk off with a little bit of help from his training staff, and there you see him getting his ankle taped up. And I got to imagine if this is the last game of, of his career being a senior that they're going to have to hold him back from Doc? getting back off on that field. What would you see down there, Doc? Yeah, they just uh, talked to Corey Driscoll, the head trainer. They're going to try to tape him and get him back out. There's no way he's going to come out of this, this football game unless he just can't walk. Last game of his career. Stevens keeps it. 
runs for 11 yards and a first down. Now this is Abilene Christian's final game of the season regardless. A couple of games ago they had hopes of making the FCS playoffs for the first time in school history, but they've lost their last two games coming in. And Burgess is one of the seniors, one of 20 seniors playing their last game here tonight. For ACU. First down state. The 33 of Abilene Christian. Stevens looking downfield. He's going to take a shot towards the end zone. He's got Gidry in the back of the end zone and off his fingertips. Incomplete. Looked like a pretty well thrown ball by Stevens. Yeah, he puts this exactly where you want to. The play action pass holds the safety. One, two, three, two hitches. He lets this go perfectly. And again, another drop. That's the second drop of the night for these Mississippi State receivers. Should be six points. They took a shot on first down. Stevens. One for four through the air to start tonight, but again, already several drops. That one is sliding attempt at the catch, but incomplete for Cameron Gardner. We got Simi had the coverage on him. Man, it's really disruption of the defensive line, but it's a low ball, and it's really a low ball because you can see it skip right there. It's a good call by the referee, but it was a little RPO action, and he's reading the outside linebacker and kind of gets hit by that defensive line. Kuyat Simi in the backfield again already. It was Lofton with the coverage on Gardner. And it's third and ten. This is about the spot in the field where the drive stalled on the first possession for Mississippi State. Stevens got hit as he threw that one hard. And quarterback pressure. Went from Jeremiah Chambers, the middle linebacker on the blitz. Yeah, you're going to see the weak side linebacker, but then they add in this another blitz. You see Kylan Hill. That's his man right there. That's his responsibility. That's Jeremiah Chambers playing some chin music on Tommy Stevens. And, you know, he had to throw into a tight, confined area and man coverage. But, you know, that's the one knock on Kylan Hill right now is talk to some scouts and some NFL evaluators. They say, Great hard runner, but he's a bit of a liability in pass protection. And you see Jeremiah Chambers, number 23. We had a chance to visit with him last night. He's one of the seniors, two-year captain, over 100 tackles this year for the second straight season. Flag comes out. Blame game, offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. I think, I think they're, they're happy just to add a little extra room here yeah. to give Tucker Day a chance to pin in. ACU. Two big opening drive stops Correction for the Wildcats. Been declined. It's fourth down. And specifically getting him on third and, and passing situations. A ACU, sensing that, refused the penalty. Which they can do. <laughs> so the ball stays at the 33. Got Kobe Clark back to receive this punt. They angling it near side. It's going to be down at the two. So a 31-yard punt with Day, and ACU is going to be at their own two when we come back to Starkville. Back, back at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi, and Southland Conference Abilene Christian Wildcats have stopped Mississippi State on their two opening drives. Tremendous momentum and emotion on the Abilene Christian sidelines. Remember, guys, Joe Moorhead said you cannot let these FCS teams hang around. They will gain momentum and confidence, and they can bite you. And Doc, uh, Coach Moorhead said he knows what the other side is like when he coached at Fordham on the FCS level. He beat a couple of FBS teams. Here's a pass right near the end zone. Kobe Clark able to get out of the end zone, but does lose yardage. Joe Moorhead... Four times played an FBS team when he was an FCS head coach at Fordham. One twice beating Temple and Army. Love what he said when he was talking about uh, his days being an FCS coach. He said, I, I have a unique perspective as being a bus league coach. And <laughs> that's what you got to do as an FCS, almost like minor league. You're busting everywhere. I believe Christian penned then handoff and Tracy James tries to barrel his way out of the end zone for virtually no gain. It's going to be third down. 
Casey trying to run an outside zone here. And Cole, the nickel Sam, wants a block in the back, but gets flushed outside. Ball gets tackled at about the two-yard line here on third and 11. Got to be careful on what you call here and what you do as a quarterback because sometimes punting is winning. And you don't want a tip ball. You don't want an interception. Your defense is playing good. You don't want to put them in a tough situation, giving them a short field. Tracy James gets up near the five. And it's going to be fourth down. Chauncey Rivers in on the stop for Mississippi State. And ACU's going to have to punt out of their own end zone. There is a Mississippi State player down. And that's Errol Thompson, man. And one of their leaders. I think their leading tackler. Also one of the captains for Mississippi State. The injury timeout here in Starkville. We'll take a break. State fans happy to see Errol Thompson walking off the field under his own power. He's your starting middle linebacker. Hudson, obviously, State wants to win this game, but they got to keep key guys healthy going yeah. into the Egg Bowl on Thursday. He's one of those key guys on defense. He's been the glue of this defense, and, and this defense lost a lot of players to the draft last year, but they've also lost a lot of players this year to injury. Five. And then three more guys serving a, a suspension. So to lose him, and we talked to Bob Shoup, defensive coordinator, yesterday. He could not sing any higher praises of Errol Thompson and what he's meant to this defense. It's a defense that lost three first-round picks from a year ago. Jeffrey Simmons, Montez Sweat, Jonathan Abram. Simon Laurier to punt. They should get... Good field position again here. Laurier had a punt blocked in their last game against Southeastern Louisiana. No pressure. And a short punt coming to the near side goes out of bounds. Close to the 30 yard line. A great starting field position for Mississippi State. Yeah, take a look at a play last week where Tommy Stevens had a lot of success running the ball. This is a quarterback power read, and he's reading the defensive end here, Jennings for Alabama. If he jets up field, then he'll hand it off. If he goes with Kylan Hill, then he's out the back door. And they do a great job of manipulating the box. I talk about quarterback runs. I think Joe, Joe Moorhead, when, even when he was at Penn State and now that he's here, I mean, there's a lot of similarities in what Dan Mullen did before he got here. Penn State, what you see, but they do as good as about as anybody is. You got five in the box, and we got plus one. We're going to run the quarterback. Nick. It's Nick Gibson getting his first run, and he barrels his way all the way near the 20. They had spotted the ball at the 35 after the punt, and that's a 14-yard run for Gibson. Yeah, how about Nick Gibson? We were wondering what his pitch count was going to be tonight, and you get a nice block right there by your receiver, perimeter blocking in the run game, and he's a big physical back. It's it's a it's a good change of pace when, when Kylan Hill comes in and when he comes in because he's a little bit more of a bulky downhill runner. Gibson running again, finds a crease, slipped a little bit, but stays on his feet. That's a run close to 10 yards out of the 13. And that's my concern for this Wildcat defense is, you know, when they start giving up big chunk yardage and Mississippi State starts rolling in some depth at their running back position with fresh legs, can they hang in there later in the game? But Nick Gibson, you see there, senior running back out of the Birmingham, Alabama area. And Joe Moorhead loves what he brings to this offense, specifically in the passing game as well. Kept by Stevens. Bounced off one tackler and all the way down to the six. A seven yard run for the state quarterback. And here is, here is that quarterback power read right there. That's who you're going to read as a quarterback. He's the free guy. He jets up field. Stevens probably could have handed that off, but he didn't and picks up five yards. It's a first and goal for Mississippi State. Gibson wrapped up from behind and thrown down by Jack Gibbons. Weak side linebacker, gain of two. Gibbons, one of the really good players in that secondary for ACU. This is where it becomes really hard in the red zone to force Mississippi State in the field goals because they get an extra body in the run game because they run their quarterback. And defensive coordinator yesterday, when we met with them for the Wildcats, said we got to be careful how we blitz in the red zone because, you know, we'll be outnumbered. 
Spivey's the tight end in motion. Gibson trying to get to the edge, and he's going to dive into the end zone with a little flare. Touchdown run of four yards for Nick Gibson, his fourth of the year. You'll see a bad angle taken by the linebacker here, 47, and no contain also by the defense of the Wildcats. And you call it a dive, I'll call it a cartwheel. It doesn't matter, it's six points. <laughs> I wonder if hey, Coach Moorhead has a problem with that. Hey, man, we're already yeah. banged up yeah. quite a bit. I don't need any more players going down when we got a short turnaround on the egg bowl. Next time, just run it in and hand it off to the ref. An ACU player down. Gibson, by the way, on that drive, first carries for Gibson tonight at four runs for 28 yards in that touchdown of four yards. Well, Gibson's a guy who came in, it's an average in seven and a half yards per carry on the season. Yeah, he's he, he's been in a, and, and look, I know Kylan Hill gets a lot of the attention and, and rightfully so, but I think any great run team has a tandem. They have a duo. You know, you look at what Georgia's doing and what they've done the past couple years. You look at Wisconsin. Look at the teams that run the football really well. They've got depth along the offensive line, and they've got depth at running back. Well, that is Bright Ihegoro, number 50, getting some help coming off the field, the Houston area player out of Sugar Land, Texas. Yeah, and this would be a big loss because they already lost their other uh, defensive tackle, Cole Burris. Zayaguro right there, and he kind of just gets rolled up also, just like Cole Burroughs did. Jeez. And those are, that's two big losses for the interior part of that Wildcat defensive line. There's Chrisman on for the extra point. The hold of Cody Sheck Snyder. Seven nothing Mississippi State with a little over five minutes to play in this first quarter. Hey, coming up Monday at a special time, nine Eastern, eight Central. We'll bring you Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regents Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears, and of course Alyssa Leg as well. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron. Talk about the hottest topics for the coming week right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Right now, the, the win for your album out of Georgia is yeah. one of the key ones so far this week in the SEC. It sure is. And how about that defense? I know there's a lot of question of can they score enough points to beat LSU in, in two weeks, but that defense is, if it's not the best in the country, it's up there with Ohio State. And I mean, they haven't given up more than 20 points this year to any team. It, it, what Kirby Smart, and you look at Georgia's defense, they're doing it with a ton of underclassmen. It's going to be a fascinating and entertaining game in Atlanta in two weeks. It's a chilly night in Starkville. It's in the 40s. We've had rain a lot of the day. It's not keeping this homecoming crowd from having fun. Seems a little late in the season for a homecoming, but hey, you know, what the heck, it's November 23rd. I think Coach Doral noticed the same thing. <laughs> and it's going to be brought out. And that decision for Ryan Staff will get him to the 15. Let's check down on the field with Doc. Hey, guys, uh, senior running back Tracy James for Abilene Christian is easily intimidated. You know, he grew up with a single mom, Angela, and two older sisters. He knows what it's like to deal with adversity and hardship. When he was eight years old, the four of them lived in Minneapolis in a homeless shelter after his mom lost her job. When he was 10, they lived in a hotel in Texas, and the only food they got was virtue, by virtue of a Baptist church. You know, he understands uh, what, what hardship and adversity is, so nothing in football is going to intimidate this young man. He's in the game now. He's a blocker leading in for Kobe Clark to pick up about three. James has been dinged up like a lot of his teammates, dealing with an ankle injury, but he's not missing a chance to play here at Mississippi State tonight. This is a guy, Hudson, that maybe he gets a chance at a camp with an NFL team eventually. Yeah, I think he will, and, and, and I think he's got top-end speed, but he plays a lot of special teams, and, and that is what 
the NFL people love about him. Make the handoff to him. Anthony rolling out. Fires. A strike caught at the 25-yard line by Justice Lee. He's another one who's been banged up. He's had a hamstring issue. He was questionable coming into tonight. We're at that time of year, Hudson, where, you know, everybody's playing with something. Yeah, everybody's banged up this time of year. And, you know, you got you to gotta find a way to just fight through and get through, especially if you're this Abilene Christian team. They finally moved the change. They get a first down there. Let's see if they decide to take a play-action shot or, or try to push the ball vertically here. Well, that's Samaje Davis. Fakes the pitch, wants to run. Goes straight ahead before he is slung down by Leo Lewis. That was it, too. That's his first snap at quarterback tonight. And coming in, you know, because of this two-quarterback system, see if he's going to stay here. Looks like he's going to stay at quarterback again. The, the challenge with that is, is when he comes in, they're a predominant run team. And, and so how do you change that up? Uh, as you see... Another quarterback right there, Luke Anthony, who's more the passer, without being too predictable. Now, watching the film from the last few games, Davis has certainly gotten better with his accuracy passing the he last sure few games. He sure has, and it's because he's he's been forced the past couple games to be the guy. Davis taking a long look to the sideline. Play clock's down to one. They're not going to get it off in time. Oh, they're just waiting to call a timeout, and that's what they do. Timeout. ACU. First timeout of the half. Adam this Durrell will be a 30 second timeout. Came up on the offensive side of the football. Was an old lineman, played at Northwest Missouri State in Maryville, which is his hometown. You mentioned the great success he had there, winning three national championships. He went 15 and 0 his last two years as the head coach with a couple of national titles. Yeah, and we asked him. We said, well, you know, why'd you leave? You know, you you're, you built a great program there in Missouri. Had a lot of Uber, an Uber amount of success, and he just said I wanted a new challenge. And you know, I can respect that. He he, he built one program up, and he, he's kind of becoming this guy who is building his image up as a uh, a program builder. Yeah. He took over a program that's in transition from D2 to D1, and he's done a good job. Young guy, he'll turn 45 in a couple of weeks. Already signed a contract extension that carries him through the 2023 season. So ACU likes what they have. And Adam Doyle, you can understand why. Let's see what he dials up here on second down and eight from their own 26. Mississippi State not bringing a lot of pressure. They're going to, it's like they're going to play zone, drop back, and let their four guys get to the quarterback. To carry and this is Tyrese White very little there maybe a yard for the sophomore brought down by Tim Washington and third down ACU all of two on third down so far Luke Anthony comes back in at the quarterback spot for Abilene Christian other teams converted a third down as of yet and Timeout, Mississippi State. Oh, Mississippi State. Their first timeout of the half. Going to use their first this will timeout. Be a 30-second timeout. Marty and McGee coming up on Wednesday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network, as well as the ESPN app. Nobody talks about Southern culture and football better than these guys. Marty and McGee. Starkville on a homecoming Saturday night. Five days before the Egg Bowl between Ole Miss and Mississippi State will be played right on this very field. Mississippi State won the Egg Bowl last year down in Oxford 35-3. The last Egg Bowl played here two years ago was won by Ole Miss. And that's the game that quarterback Nick Fitzgerald of State broke his ankle. State tried to rally late but lost 31-28. We're still a few days away from the Egg Bowl. Business at hand for Mississippi State tonight is the Southland Conference's Abilene Christian. Free play here. Mississippi State jumped, and he's got a man open. And oh. Off the fingertips. Justice Lee. Mississippi State was offside. Justice Lee, there's a Boston coverage. 
And the safety Offside. for Mississippi State. Defense number 42. Five yard penalty. Yeah, Sean Preston just fell down. He yeah, just slipped and Man, that is a missed opportunity if you're Luke Anthony. That would have been an absolute touchdown. He slipped. They're playing man coverage. They brought pressure, and he went to the right place. Just didn't put enough air under it. But you get another shot, third and three here. Preston, by the way, getting the start at free safety. C.J. Morgan, season-ending injury last year, or last game, that is, to end his season. This is Samaje Davis fighting his way. He's going to get the first down. He would not be denied. Eventually tackled by Leo Lewis. Needed three, got three. First down, ACU. Yeah, got the first down pretty easily. This is the power quarterback read. They faked the sweep. It's the same play that we just showed you that Mississippi State likes to run. And Well, that was a fumble if it uh, if he hadn't fallen back on it. Usually you teach your guys, you know, unless it's fourth down, you don't want to reach for the sticks. But good quarterback play design there to get the first down and move the chains. Three rushes for 15 yards for Davis. Here's Anthony back in. He's going to take a deep shot again. Ball double covered and incomplete. Coming over late in the coverage was Jaquarius Landers. Looked like he had a chance to pick that one off. Yeah, well, it starts with the protection. Look at this protection by the offensive line. I mean, just stonewalling the defensive front for Mississippi, or to Mississippi State. And, you know, Fink just isn't able to track the ball as well. But those shots, while you don't land them, they serve their purpose. And here early in the game, even if you don't connect on them, you still got to love the aggressiveness. Fink, who has 63 catches for 822 yards on the season to lead ACU. But Tracy James unable to make the catch there. And it's third down and 10. If they're getting that type of protection moving forward, Adam Doral, their play caller and head coach, is going to come back to take the shots. They just converted their first third down. That was a third and three. They're 0 of 2 on third down when it's third and 10. You see this double A gap pressure right here by Mississippi State. Who's coming and who's not? It's hard to decipher. Quick slant. It's caught by Kobe Clark. And it'll only pick up a yard or two. And ACU will have to punt after just a one yard game. Yeah, and you can see they kind of take the safe route out and throw a little jailbreak screen. Hoping that they would catch Mississippi State by shoot in an all-out pressure, but they don't. They disguise it and they back out. And that's that double leg gap pressure that's becoming a lot more prevalent from college even into the pros. They stack those double linebackers over the center. Sometimes they come. If you got safeties that what I call hold their water, they don't show their hand too early. I always felt like as a quarterback, the only way to figure out when guys were coming and when they're not is if the safeties rotate before the snap, and there they didn't. Dedrick Thomas back to receive the punt for Mississippi State. Simon Laurier. It's a high, boomy punt. Called for a fair catch, but it lands. Hit a body, but it's going to be down. But it was originally touched by an ACU player up near the 25. Be a 38-yard punt. Well, this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Saturday night in Starkville, just under a minute to play in the first quarter. The only score so far, a four-yard touchdown run for State's running back, Nick Gibson. Kylan Hill back in. Bulldogs start from their own 25. Stevens takes a shot. He's looking for Green. And a little hand check there at the end. No flag incomplete. Doc, what are you seeing defensively down there right now? Well, just talking about the fact that uh, the two senior defensive tackles for the Wildcats are still being evaluated. and They can ill afford to lose either one of those guys. Mm -hmm. They have taken uh, Cole Burgess to the locker room for further evaluation. And Brian Igawaro is in the medical tent being worked on by their orthopedic guy, uh, David Stark. So uh, both are starting senior defensive tackles off the field being evaluated. Wow. Keep an eye on that. Thank you, Doc. There's a run for Hill. He's got some room on the outside. Gets bumped out of bounds at the 32 by Gabe Ortega. Seven-yard run for Kylan Hill. It's a 
pickup of eight, setting up a third and short. Almost no difference between the play clock and game clock. I think they are going to have to snap it, though, before the quarter comes to an end. We give it back to Kylan Hill. Has the first down and a lot more. And right now, almost able to break that. Gets tripped up by Ortega. All the way to the ACU 45, a 22-yard gallop. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter. Seven carries now, 61 yards for Kylan Hill after this run. 7 nothing. Mississippi State needs ACU after one quarter. Jack the Bulldog enjoying some treats. Jack's like me. He'll do anything for a treat. Got the uniform on. We head into the second quarter from Starkville homecoming Saturday in Starkville, Mississippi. Mississippi State leading Abilene Christian 7-0. This is the fourth drive for Mississippi State to reach ACU territory, but so far only the seven points on the Gibson touchdown run to show for it to Stevens pass. And is caught Dante Jones, the tight end, picks up five. You know, we were talking to Coach Moorhead yesterday when he was explaining this offense and, and where the roots of it came from. He said it's a West Coast offense mixed with RPOs, and that's what you just saw there. Fourth op RPO already called of the day, and that's a pickup of five yards. Read the outside linebacker if he jumps, and you throw out there on the slant route. Kylan Hill. It's bounced back. We'll see if they get in forward progress. They will to about the 39. But still a minimal gain. Cole Burgess back in makes the stop and for he, ECU. He makes a huge difference. I mean, this defensive line is just so scrappy. They learn a lot of tw twists and stunts. And, boy, it looked like they might have gotten away with a face mask right there. Trying to see what number that was. 73. You might have gotten away with, I think you could tell by the body language of Kylan Hill getting up. A third down and four. Kylan Hill running to the outside, the first down. Taking a look at the 30, and will be dropped there at the 29. And then on third and about three, picks up 10 before he's tackled by Jeremiah Chambers. Kylan getting up a little gingerly. You know, we thought coming into the game, what was going to be his pitch count? And, and as long as this game is close, he's going to have to go. He looks a bit frustrated, not for sure what about. He goes over and sits on the sideline, but... Nick Gibson has taken his spot. Stevens steps up, fires across the middle, and that is behind Javante Payton. Talking to Tommy Stevens, you know, he said he wanted to get better at his pocket presence, and you saw him climb the pocket there, and also talked about processing information quicker, getting off his first read. You know, he tried to find a one-on-one -on -one matchup there with his tight end, Dante Jones. Didn't like it. Second high ball, he's thrown over the middle, though. Run for Gibson. Squirts through the pile. Across the 25 to the 24. And in Richmond, the strong safety up to make the tackle. Hills run nine times for 72 yards, so he's averaging, averaging eight yards a carry, and now Gibson five carries for 33, averaging about six and a half with a touchdown. And the rush yards heavily slanted as a result of that in favor of Mississippi State. State's converted both their third and five or lesses. Here's the tight end, Green down the sideline, and a big stiff arm at the 10 on Brandon Richmond. So again, another RPO screen, and what you're going to see is this guy just run out in the flat, and he's going to get blocked by his two receivers. And then Chambers, the middle linebacker, has got to cover in space. And you're seeing that a lot more in college football where it's, it, it's basically a predetermined screen. We used to call it white yo-yo, and the two receivers are blocking. You make the, the middle linebacker or the high safety cover ground. 
First catch of the night for Green, his 15th overall on the season. There's a strike to the end zone. Touchdown, Dedrick Thomas. His second touchdown catch of the season from 11 yards out. Senior out of Memphis with the touchdown catch. He's Chrisman. Going for the extra point. He holds the school record for the most made PATs. Made number 110 in his career in the first quarter. This would be number 111. To add to his school record. And it's 14 nothing. Touchdown catch for Dedrick Thomas. Second touchdown of the year. Read the mic. Linebacker, if he bites up on it, throw the inside slant route. Bulldogs up 14. But to show you again the success that Nick Stevens had on this drive. Here is Keir, the inside linebacker for the Wildcats, and that's Stevens' read key. You'll see here, put the ball in the belly. See his eyes are up. He bites on it. And because Dedrick had outside leverage by the DB giving up the inside, the slant route was the perfect play call. Everybody talks about RPOs, run pass options, and how they're becoming so hard to defend. And I tell you, I feel so bad for defensive coordinators at the college level now because I don't know how you coach to defend that, Mark. And then you look at this drive for Nick Stevens. He went three for five, 29 yards, and a touchdown got into a nice rhythm. Goodman's kickoff from the five, Justice Lee. Won't quite make it to the 15. So a 14 0 lead for Mississippi State here early in this second quarter. Here comes the Abilene Christian offense. We've seen that two quarterback system, Luke Anthony. As well as Samaj Davis, it's Anthony to start the drive. Yeah, I thought Luke Anthony had a good first quarter. He missed a, a big throw of a receiver running down the middle of the field wide open when a, when a safety for Mississippi State, Sean Preston, slipped. But other than that, we've seen them be able to move the football. But what an imperative, important drive for the Wildcats here. You feel like they just need to find a way to, even if it's a field goal, maybe milk some clock, keep their defense on the sideline for some rest. The time Anthony throws and finds his man in stride at the 30. That is caught by Josh Fink. Hey, Doc, what have you heard about Errol Thompson? Yeah, I took him to the locker room. He got poked in the eye, so he had some uh, watering, and he was going to go in and evaluate the eye. Obviously, if you can't see if the eye is watering, you can't play. They've taken him into the locker room. He still has not come back out. They're telling us he will be back on the field, but right now it's all Tim Washington at the mic. Washington, a senior out of Yazoo City, Mississippi. 17-yard pickup on that pass play and a first down for ACU. Number 33, here's a pitch, Tracy James. It's a couple to the 35. Let's check in with the studio. Say hey to Dari Noka. Is he adding to that Heisman resume tonight? This is Samaj Davis for ACU and a quarterback rolling around. What's he going to do now? And just throws it away. He's hard to catch back there, man. He does have some moves. And the third and long coming up. Third and seven. Davis to the sideline. Take a look at the chances to win today. 1.4% for ACU here. Arkansas has a 1.3% chance, according to the odds makers at LSU. So ACU's got a better chance of pulling the upset than Arkansas, according to them. Not by much. Anthony's throws out of reach in the direction there of Josh Fink. It's fourth down. Three 
three and out that time for the Abilene Christian offense. Oh, did get the one first down on that pass play. Laurier to punt again. Thomas going to let this bounce. He's going to chase it, scoop it up, retreat, and be brought down at the 11. So a 47 yard punt and staff there on special teams. Thomas dropped back at the 12. Let's look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes Benz. It's Joe Burrow adding to the Heisman resume. Look at the NCAA ranks for the LSU offense and the Georgia defense. We're going to get to see this matchup in the SEC championship game in Atlanta soon. What do you like, offense or defense, Mark? Both can be sexy, by the way. They, they Both can. can pass the eye test, by the way. No doubt about it. It's going to be fun at the Mercedes-Benz Dome there. There's Kylan Hill off to the races. One play, touchdown, 88 yards. Touchdown catch for Kylan Hill. Well, they fake the quarterback power, and he's just going to sneak out of the backfield, and the linebacker who's responsible for him bites up on the run. That's a great play design. And you see Mississippi State, they've tried to implement this over the past couple weeks. They tried to run it last week against Alabama, and Alabama sniffed it out. But what a phenomenal play design and great execution. Great call by Joe Moorhead. It is Kylan Hill's first touchdown catch of the season. And a long one of 88 yards. And just like that, it's now 21 0 Mississippi State with still over 10 minutes to go in the first half. I was just about to tell you that Kylan Hill had moved into seventh place in school history with 1,134 rushing yards, needing 60 more to reach the top five. Well, they got 88. CP yards yeah. right there to add to the lead. You look at the way NFL teams are using running backs now. It's not all about being that back that can carry the ball 25, 30 times. Running backs have short shelf life. And speaking of that, here's a guy in Kylan Hill who's a junior, and it'll be interesting to see as the couple weeks evolve here in the new future what is what does he decide to do about the nfl is he going to put his name in or is he going to come back for a senior year i'll tell you this joe moorhead he, he he loves to recruit i think his number one priority in recruiting should be to recruit him back to starkville next year well kylan hill at some point will certainly have an nfl career we'll see when that is but sooner rather than later still 10 13 to play first half Gibson, Thomas, and now Hill all with touchdowns for Mississippi State. Staff elects to take it out from a couple yards deep. He's coming to the near side. And he's spun down up at the 24-yard line. And coming up Friday, we got a men's hoops doubleheader for you right here on the SEC Network, as well as the ESPN app. Number 9, Kentucky hosts UAB in Rupp Arena in the first game, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then we take you to Gainesville. Marshall visits Florida. Coming up on Friday here on the SEC Network. Mississippi State playing two true freshmen in the secondary today, Mark, as Cameron Dantzler is out, the junior. Martin Emerson got the start as well as Sean Preston in the secondary. See if they try to attack that. It's a run for Tyrese White. He picks up. Close to 10 on the first play of this possession. You mentioned Cameron Dantzler. They do hope to have him back for the Egg Bowl on Thursday. I think that will be the case. And it was 
a gain of 10 first down. Tracy James motions out of the backfield. And picked up out there by Sean Preston. There's a pass across the middle and that's a completion. That's Brandon Hohenstein. The tight end. You know if he was going to play tonight. He's been banged up and now he's hobbling a bit off the field. Well with the motion. Luke Anthony knows it's zone because the safety bumped out with the running back. And two high split safety coverage which was the defense. He knows he can attack the weakness of the defense in the secondary which is the middle of the field. After an 18 yard gain first down from the 47 of Mississippi State. Anthony with time to throw to the sideline and a bullet. The fastball caught by Josh Fink for eight yards. You know, I got to tell you what, Luke Anthony's getting a lot more playing time tonight because they're down 21 and he is the throwing quarterback. But you're seeing a guy, when given the opportunity to be the guy and be the quarterback, getting to a rhythm. And he told us yesterday that, yeah, there's a little bit of frustration in a two-quarterback system because it's hard for me to get into a rhythm. It's hard to me to, you know, not play to make a mistake. Inside handoff, nothing there for Kobe Clark. He loses four. Marquis Spencer there defensively. And Marquis Spencer right there, just going to jet up field. And that's the guy you leave free on speed sweeps, but not Marquis Spencer. Too athletic and seen that one too many times from his own offense and practice. ACU one of five on third down. Better find Josh Fink for 87. They got an early start. Fink offsides. Ball start. Offense number 87. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. I said, fine, Fink. Don't go, Fink. Jim Williamson, our referee tonight. Been a fairly clean game. And the penalty markers out much yet. This is where it becomes virtually impossible in third and 11 when everybody in the stadium knows, especially Bob Shute, defensive coordinator, knows you're going to throw the football. Right, these defensive ends from Mississippi State. Here comes that double A gap pressure again. Right, and watch these safeties. See if they show their hand. Anthony looking for James out of the backfield. He has it, turns upfield. He's going to have the first down. Push down of bounds inside the 30. And Tracy James on that catch. And run moves the sticks. Now there is a flag. I wonder if they're going to call offensive pass interference. But the flag is thrown in the secondary, way back in the secondary. Not could maybe be a late hit out of bounds. There is no foul for a late hit. The contact was in the field of play. It is a 21-yard gain. We'll see it. From beginning to end, see what we see at the end as well. But a nice catch and run here. Yeah, it kind of looked like it was supposed to be intended to be a wheel route up the sideline, and the secondary just kind of let go of uh, of Tracy James, and well, Anthony just gave it to him right now. I'll tell you what, Jerry Jones yeah. definitely hit him out of bounds. He didn't hit him hard. But they picked up the flag. Washington got a piece of that. Get down in 10. Well, here comes Samaj Davis, the quarterback, and he's been in four times. Three of them have been run plays. He's had one pass attempt, but it was on a double pass when he was lined up at a receiver. Been ACU's best drive so far. Samaj Davis in at quarterback. He throws, and it's picked off. An Aaron pass. Landrews. There is a flag on the return. He's going to get up towards the 25. And Davis is just way off the mark. Kobe Clark was the closest ACU wide receiver in the vicinity. Well, Samaje told us yesterday that he wanted to improve his decision making outside of the pocket. And I'm not for sure where he's throwing it because no one was there. Blocking back. Receiving team number 41. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And Tim Washington gets called for the black in the back on the interception return. As you see the takeaway dog collar being proudly worn now. You know, and Samaje here, they fake the pitch, try to get the linebackers up. Okay, he gets flushed out of the pocket, but, you know, he, I see what he's looking at. He sees ah. his receiver in the back of the end zone, but doesn't even come close to getting enough juice on it to get it to him. 
Yeah, that was Javorian Miller in the end zone, and he looked wide open. He was wide open. But for ACU, they have a second down and goal from the four. Anthony's the quarterback. Tracy James in the backfield for the Wildcats. Tracy James, he throws to the corner of the end zone incomplete. There's another little gadget we hadn't seen yet. The running back, Tracy James, trying to find Kobe Clark. Well, and I think you run something like that because you don't have a lot of confidence that you're just going to be able to run the ball between the tackles and get a touchdown four yards out. And, and, and I agree. The challenging part here is, you know, you don't have a big, tall receiver that can climb the ladder. Kobe Clark and Josh Fink are both six foot and five ten. Third and goal, Anthony looking, dumps it off. Here's Tracy James barreling his way in. Touchdown, ACU. The 225-pound running back bruises his way into the end zone. ACU's on the board. I, I love when coaches get unconventional ways to get their players in space, and that was a rollout. And it made the Mississippi State defense think that the ball was going to the right side of the field. And Luke Anthony pulls up, he throws the ball back to Tracy James, and he has four or five offensive linemen blocking downfield for him. That is great play design. James put a hit on the safety, Sean Preston there as he got into the end zone. Six touchdown catch of the year for Tracy James, who now has accounted for 20 total touchdowns on the year. You know, here he is, he's gonna roll out. Okay, look at this Mississippi State defense, and then it's a throwback. And he's got one, two, three, four on two. And, and that's what I was saying. They're not going to be able to just line up and overpower and run the football for four yards. So tip your cap to Adam Doral finding unconventional ways to score points. And that's what you got to do in games like this where you look across the line and you, the guys are a little more athletic. They're a little bigger than you. That's great coaching. Doc has more down below. You know, Adam Doral told his players, he said, we have nothing to lose when we came here to play. He said, uh, our goals this week are to play with energy and passion, and number two, make a sports center highlight in a good way. <laughs> Not a bad way, but a good way. Let's leave here and show them that we can play football. He's and, loving it. Yeah, Doc, he's loving they're, it. They're having fun, no doubt about it. The smile from Adam Doral and his staff and the players. They're down 14, but it feels like they're tied. You know, I mean, they... If they're able to hold Mississippi State here before halftime, the momentum has kind of been just sucked out of this, this stadium. And a key that, that you alluded to, Hudson, is, is the play of the quarterback, Anthony. Last two drives, he's seven for eight through the air with 91 yards and a touchdown. This is Cole, Brian Cole. And we turn up towards the 25-yard line. 32, Brian Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the famous Maroon Band and the Homecoming Court presentation. That's on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming now on the ESPN app. Well, it's that homecoming. drive, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Mark. I was just going to say that that drive is was so important, mainly not only could you get a touchdown, but you gave that defense a chance to get over there and catch their breath. You soak up five minutes on the clock, and. Now you come out, it'll be interesting to see what does Mississippi State do? They they try to go get points here, two minute drive with two timeouts left. They put trust in the right arm of their quarterback, Tommy Stevens. They take the safe route. And they're gonna run the football. Gonna hand it off. Stiff arm run all the way across the 30 for the 31 yard line goes Hill. It was Bolu Onufato made the tackle. And I go Oro there, number 50 in the back the backfield. Would have got a second tackle for loss, but wasn't quite able to wrap Hill up. Nick Gibson comes in now in the second down at four. And Stevens to throw. Far side. Into the arms of the Cyrus Mitchell. We have the first down about the 38. Tackled by Brandon Richmond. If I'm this Wildcat defense, I'm going to play coverage. I'm going to rush four. Mississippi State's getting to the point where they're going to have to throw the football if they want to pick up jump yardage. I'll bring four, but don't give up anything over the top. First catch of the night for Mitchell, his team leading 27th of the season. Stevens 
Throws it underneath and a catch for Guidry. Still on his feet now, eventually tackled. They're going to give him forward progress all the way up to the 44. A couple of drops tonight for Guidry. Hung on to that one. And for Guidry, his first catch of the night. Right back up to the line. and Guys weren't set. Mm -hmm. Only called timeout. Timeout. ACU. Second timeout of the half. Evelyn Christian uses their second time out of this first half with a minute nine to go. Third year head coach Adam Doral as the Evelyn Christian Wildcats. The first points of the night, that last drive. The Evelyn Christian team that has found their head coach after he won three national titles at the Division II level for his alma mater, Northwest Missouri State. He's very also proud about the academics at the school and how the grades have been going up for the team. ACU is not an easy school to get into academically. They, they have some standards, which can make it tougher to recruit some players sometimes. He says, hey, you know, something, we, we got to get the guys that, you know, they get a, at least a 25 on their ACT a lot of times. He bragged about it. They had four players make the all academic team, and he said mm -hmm. even guys like Stanford they didn't have Did four. <laughs> They see you did. <laughs> Second down and short. Stevens is going to run it for the first down. He's across midfield. On the way to the 43 of ACU, brought down by Jack Gibbons, 12 yard run. This is where it becomes such a quandary uh, defensively as a coordinator. Uh, what do you do with the box? Because Stevens can't make plays with his legs. Stevens to throw deep on first down, going towards the end zone, incomplete. It was Mitchell, the intended receiver. And Alex Lofton on the coverage, and both are slow to get up. See him just a little hand combat. Going on, and Gidry kind of just trips over Alex Lofton, and you know nothing really sticks out there. But hopefully, it's nothing more than a dead leg for both the guys. Stevens now 0 for 3 on his deep ball shots. I wonder if it was when Gidry kind of landed, you know, as he had to hop over Alex Lofton on the ground, if he just kind of landed awkwardly. Both players needing some assistance to get up. You know, every time one of these players goes down, and it's great to see Osiris jog off the field there with the egg ball looming right around the corner four days away. But you know, Joe Moorhead, every time he sees one of his starters go down, and there's been plenty go down tonight that he's just sitting over there holding his breath because, like I said, Ole Miss is on their bye week right now. You know, they've been sitting at home the past seven days, and it'll be ten come Thanksgiving Thursday next week, but you know they've had they've 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 had a leg up in prep and leg up in recovery and so City State needs to get out of here healthy tonight with a win. 48 seconds left in the first half. Stevens stands tall, throws, has his man wide open, Hill, but he overthrew him. And Hill already has an 88-yard touchdown catch tonight. Stevens did get some pressure as he threw that and overthrew him. And they're going to bring a blitz right here off the edge, a double C and D gap blitz. And the outside linebacker, Torrey Hargrove, you can see he was responsible to peel as Hill released, free release down the sideline. That's a busted assignment. That should be a walk-in touchdown. Instead, third and 10. Still at the 43-yard line of ACU. Stevens just kind of flips it out, and that's caught. And he was all, about all wrapped up, but found the tight end, Dante Jones. Not enough for a first down, though. It's going to be fourth down and about seven. 
Looks like Tyree Phillips, the left tackle, is down at about the 45-yard line. And Timmy San Kuyat Simi, number 98 for ACU, is down. For the second time in about four plays, we have a player from each team down after the completion of a play. Kuyat Simi, a senior out of Houston. ACU, by the way, that defensive line has been putting some pressure on Tommy Stevens. Six pressures tonight and four quarterback hits. Four knockdowns. Well, Clint Brown, the defensive coordinator, said, I'm going to bring the house. And they brought a six-man pressure. Second time you out there. see Kuyat Simi gets one hand in there. And, but they brought more than Mississippi State could handle in protection. Now Tyree Phillips and Kuyat Simi both kind of gingerly walking off the field. It's a big loss for both teams. You're starting yeah. left tackle in, in your best interior, really your outside pass rush. Guy who has 11 TFLs and eight sacks this year on your defense. Tyree Phillips going to the medical tent. We got Simi assisted off for ACU. What's interesting is is both those guys, Kuyat Simi and, and Tyree Phillips, are on the same side of the line. So, you know, left tackle versus that that left defensive end. So you have backups at both those positions now. Fourth and six, Mississippi State going for it from the 39 of Abilene Christian. Stevens. Firing near side, and that's well played and batted away by Brandon Richmond. And ACU will take over on downs with 29 seconds left in the first half. Oh, Dedrick Thomas just going to run an out route from the slot. And Brandon Richmond does a great job of not only driving and breaking it off, but he does it without getting a pass interference. He doesn't use his offhand to hook the receiver. And that is just great fundamental defense right there played in the secondary because what most guys in the secondary will do right there is they'll panic and they'll use their offhand to hook the player and then it's a you know automatic first down 15 yard penalty. That's that's playing with great technique there. The ACU 29 seconds left in the half. They have one timeout. The ball at their own 39. How aggressive do they get here? Now well, they're going to use their last timeout. Perhaps to discuss that. Timeout, ACU. Well, we are five days away timeout. from the Egg Bowl, which was established in 1901. Right now, Mississippi State owns the trophy. They have the trophy, I should say, possession. They don't own it. <laughs> we saw it Friday. Yeah, it's proudly displayed in their football office. Miss, Ole Miss, though, you see, they lead the Lifetime Series. You got a selfie with it, and it's up on your Instagram now. <laughs> Go check it out, at Mark Neely. Well, you mentioned that, but we did send somebody over to take a look <laughs> and photograph it. There it is. There's the Egg Bowl trophy. It's over at the Seal Football Complex. Is it still going to be there a week from now, or is it going to be up north from here in Oxford? All right. They're going to play conservatively and go to the half. Trailing 21-7, and if you're ACU, you're going to the locker room here, Hudson. Yeah, you're down 14 to an SEC team, but probably feeling pretty good about yourself. Well, and the other drive that you had in the run zone ended with a Samaj uh, Davis interception, uh, and so you, you could make a case that you know it should be a closer game. But you're right. I mean, Doral, Coach Doral's going into halftime, and, and his team is feeling great with where they're at. They've been able to move the ball offensively. It's the first time ACU's ever played an SEC team. They're actually going to open up next season against Texas A&M. So strangely enough, they'll play back-to-back -back games against SEC teams, but in different seasons. ACU's going to get the ball to start the second half. Remember, they won the coin toss in the third. They will have the football to begin half number two. Mississippi State did get touchdowns from Gibson, Thomas, and Hill. And Tracy James has the touchdown for ACU. Doc has coach. Hey, Coach, as a former FCS coach, you warned everybody this week you can't let these guys hang around. 
What are your thoughts about the first half? No, I think they're playing hard. They're playing tough. I think we had some opportunities on offense we need to convert on. It got going a little bit there in the second quarter. I thought we played well defensively aside from the last series. So we just got to regroup, come out, and play clean game. A hey, great call with Tommy Stevens on the fake power and toss to Hill. What did you see? No, they were playing a split safety coverage. We had the uh, Mike linebacker isolated on the back, and he came down for the run. We were able to throw it down the middle. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Doc. Coach Doc, thanks very much. At the half, Mississippi State leading Abilene Christian 21 to 7. After the break, we'll send it to the studio for the halftime report with Dari Doring and Coach Chiswick.
Welcome back to Saturday Night Football on the SEC Network. About ready to start the second half. 21-7. Two touchdown lead for Mississippi State over Abilene Christian. Great to have you with us tonight. Got Dr. Jerry Punch down on the field. Former Georgia quarterback Hudson Mason. I'm Mark Neely. If you're Mississippi State, ideally you would have liked to have been ahead by enough here at the half. and Maybe you pulled the starters. ACU is not cooperating in that department right now. No, they aren't, and uh, they've been disruptive, getting some sacks and some TFLs, especially in the run game, although uh, Mississippi State has been able to run the ball for over 130 yards. I think it's Mississippi State's third down offense, only three yeah. for eight right now, and they've had some drops. Gidry's yes. had some big drops for a touchdown, one over the middle. They had a drop by a Green, their tight end, so they've got to find some more consistency in the passing game, and uh, I, I yeah. love the decision right now to keep the ball in the hands uh, of the Abilene Christian quarterback. Um, and, and, I, and I think the decision really is to keep letting him throw the football, Luke Anthony. Let's take a look at tonight's Star Watch brought to you by State Farm. And Kylan Hill, impressive first half, had an 88 yard touchdown catch, but also 10 rushes for 78 yards. He is our Star Watch brought to you by State Farm. There's the catch, an 88 yard run. One of the big plays for Mississippi State in the first half. Again, Abilene Christian going to get the ball to begin half number two. And the fair catch taken in the end zone. Let's check down to field level once again with Dr. Jerry Punch. Spoke with Wildcat head coach Adam Doyle. He said, I was so proud of my kids. I told them in the locker room at halftime, I'm so proud of how hard they played. So much emotion, so much intensity. As if then I told them this. No one's going to remember that first half. They're going to remember the next 30 minutes. We get the football to begin the second half. If we can drive down and score, we're going to make this very, very interesting. He said, now, offensively, they're doing some things to take away Samaje. So we're going to run some counters in the second half to get him open and do a little bit better job of throwing the football. Doc, he's exactly right. Big drive here for ACU to try to make this an even tighter game. Anthony throws and finds a wide open Hohenstein who has three catches tonight. He's all the way up past oh. midfield, and he breaks away again, and he's down the sideline and <laughs> lays a big hit on Jerry and Jones, and what a way to start the half for ACU. Well, it's not only that he's running and, he, and that he, you give up a big play, but he's running wide open in the middle of the field, and, and there's no safety. There's really no linebackers matching patterns, and then you can see there... There were four black shirts around him. You don't bring him down. I mean, this is this is not the start you want if you're Bob Shoot defensively. 52-yard gain, and you see him hobble. He's done this every time he's come into the game, Hohenstein. He'll make a big play. He has three catches for 100 yards, and here's a reception for Kobe Clark, and with that catch, Kobe Clark has now tied Ronnie Vincent for the single-season school record in catches with 82. And look, Mississippi State's playing two freshmen, really three now, because Jaron Jones, the freshman from Brandon, Mississippi, is playing the field corner position now. And then Martin Emerson's on the other side. And, and then you got Sean Preston at free safety filling in for the injured C.J. Morgan. But they're playing a lot of zone, so... Second and two, and here coming around this side. This is a first down run inside the 10. Samaj Davis, so they 
Find another way to use him again gain a six. Well, this is how they used him on the first drive. It was a speed sweep, and then, you know, he kind of disappeared in the offense. He had the interception, but uh, I think you've got to find a way, whether it's predominantly at running back and receiver. He's just too good of an athlete. Got to get him involved in the second half. I would keep the ball, though, as far as the quarterback position in the right arm of Luke Anthony. There's three receivers up top. He's looking, and he finds Tracy James, but this time he's going to be tackled for a loss. Back at the 16 by Chauncey Rivers and freshman Nathan Pickering, a loss of seven. Yeah, this was the play they scored on earlier, the, the rollout. And then they try to throw it back, a screenplay. This time, nobody for Mississippi State. Everybody stays home. Nathan Pickering there, number 22. Great job of having his eyes in the right spot, having the right read keys. Rivers Pickering, by the way, the true freshman, made his first career start tonight. Here's a free play. Well, they're going to whistle oh. it dead. Oh, why the? Yeah. Chauncey Rivers jumped. I think Luke Anthony kind of put his arms out like, hey. Yeah, usually that's a live ball foul. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Rodgers makes a killing off that. <laughs> False start. Offense number 88. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. And there's the reason Kobe yep. Clark called for the false start for ACU. That'll cost him five yards. And that's going to be second and goal, but the ball's going to be all the way back at the 20. First possession of the second half. Abilene Christian. Quick strike, but Clark go down to a knee to make that catch. Picks up four yards. Third goal. And with that catch, Clark has just become the single season receiving leader with his 83rd catch, passing Ronnie Vincent, who set the mark of 82 back in 1969. 82 catches in a single season. That's uh, that's a heck of an accomplishment. Important here for Luke Anthony to make sure he doesn't make a dumb decision. You've got to get away with points here. Don't force anything. Rank three, Anthony Lowe throw to the 10, and another sliding catch for Clark, who adds to his record with a six-yard catch. It's going to be fourth and goal, and they're going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. No sign of the field goal unit. They keep their place kicker, Blair Zepeda, on the sideline. And on fourth and goal from the 10, big play here for ACU. He's being chased. Anthony able to buy some time and fire towards the end zone. Incomplete. And ACU will turn it over on down. Sean Preston, the free safety, able to get there on the coverage and get a hand and knock it away. Well, Luke Anthony is going to get flushed out of the pocket and does a great job of ad-libbing, looking for his receiver, Kobe Clark. And Sean Preston, the freshman, breaks it up. NFL Primetime is back. Primetime is available Sunday through Wednesday only on ESPN+. Good to have Boomer and TJ back together. Mississippi State takes over on downs from the 10 as Evelyn Christian failed to convert on fourth down and goal. Are you surprised they didn't take what would have been about a 27-yard field goal? Yeah, I, I am. I would have kicked the points there. And, and I know Coach Doran told us, Doral told us coming in that they wanted to, you know, go all for this thing and they weren't going to hold back. But, you know, this early in the third quarter, I, I think you take the points there and it's only a two-possession ball game still. Being aggressive, going for it on fourth to ten certainly gave an indication like, hey, we if they score a touchdown there, this homecoming crowd gets a lot more uncomfortable here in Starkville. And there's a run. And stiff arm from Kylan Hill. Gets him all the way up to the 35-yard line as he goes for 21 yards. Now this time they've been running the power. This time they run the counter. Make it look like you're going one way, and then you kind of just jet out the back door. And look at that small back attribute that Coach Moorhead was talking about. And what he means by that is the burst, the skill set, the lateral movement. That's what you get 
but he's also the big body. He's 215 pounds, bulldoze runner. Quick strike out to the tight end, Farad Green. For the 45. Jack Gibbons, the tackle for ACU. Second catch of the game for Green. 11 yard gain, first down. Kylan Hill makes a couple of nice moves and then gets caught from behind by Jeremiah Chambers. Nine yard gain. Yeah, not good news for the Wildcats. Both their senior defensive tackles look like they're done for the night. Cole Burgess had come back and tried to play some in the second quarter. He came out of the locker room and just could not go. And Igawaro also is done for the night. So uh, going to be tough up front for uh, Abilene Christian. Yeah, tough for ACU. Thanks for the update, Doc. A second down and one. Stevens steps up, fires across the middle, and it's caught by Dedrick Thomas. The first down up by the ACU, 30, good for 17 yards. Well, this concept where they pull the guard there, Parker makes it look like run, gets the linebackers to suck up, and you can see they were trying to check the post over the top to Gardner, and then Thomas just finds a hole in the zone coverage. Stevens keeps inside the 10. A stiff arm hit the pylon. Touchdown. Block from Cam Gardner, one of the receivers. Did he get to the pylon? Yeah, it looks like he did. Looks like a touchdown to me. Foot still in bounds. Ball crosses the plane. Body still in bounds. Feet still in bounds. I think that's absolutely a touchdown. 30 yard touchdown run for the quarterback, Tommy Stevens. So after ACU got the football to begin the second half, we're driving at a first and goal. Turned it over on downs. With an opportunity to make it a, a seven point game. And now here's Mississippi State. With a touchdown on their first possession of the half, and the extra point makes it 28 to 7 State. Garrett Schrader. Tommy Stevens out. Touchdown, Mississippi State. State quarterback Tommy Stevens. Let's learn some more about him. How'd he get psyched up before the games? He likes Metallica. That's his pregame mixtape. He's doing his master's degree after being a grad transfer from Penn State. Ward number two at Penn State. Of course, wears number seven here, which is the same number that Nick Fitzgerald wore. They're about the same size, same weight. And I mentioned that to Tommy Stevens yesterday, and I said, those are kind of strange similarities and he said you know what the weird thing is I also have Nick Fitzgerald's locker now his old locker maybe a weird infatuation with uh, <laughs> Fitz, yeah. Nick Fitzgerald but you're you're right man you watch this guy on tape you feel like you're watching the, yeah. the 2018 Mississippi State offense it's it's very Nick similar. He, and, yeah. he and Fitzgerald I mean obviously both really good running quarterbacks and fair catch taken to the five Hey, coming up Monday, a special time, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. We'll bring you Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regents Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. We'll break down the weekend on the gridiron and talk about the hottest topics for the coming week right here on the SEC Network as well as the ESPNN. Don't forget about Alyssa Lang there as well. Nick Fitzgerald, by the way, he's on the practice squad for the Buccaneers. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Still, still playing football. Good for him. Here is Samaje Davis, now a quarterback for ACU. He's in that two-quarterback system. Up and running full speed, though we had seen a lot of Anthony, but now down by three scores. They run Davis to the field side. He'll gain about three to the 28. Yeah, it'll be, by Jacorius Landers. It'll be interesting to see how committed they are to run the football down 21 points. Well, one play and Davis comes out. Anthony has thrown the ball well here after a bit of a slow start. Looks to throw on second down. Comes towards the near sideline and out of reach. Kobe Clark. 
And Brian Cole on his tail there. And I think his Wildcat offensive line has done a great job protecting him. You know, he's he's always had time to go through his progressions and find somebody. They're going to need to find some protection here on third and seven because Bob Shoup has been bringing pressure on the past couple downs. They'll walk up these linebackers and bring the heat. Picked up pretty well. Here's a pass. And looking back incomplete, but there is a flag. Looks like we're going to get defensive pass interference on freshman Martin Emerson. Brendan Harmon, a sophomore transfer from Rice, was the intended receiver for ACU. Pass interference, defense number one. The penalty will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. See, this is this is what happens when you give your chance or you receiver a chance to make the play. You see a yank there by Emerson, really a double yank. And you know Emerson has got a bright future here. He's young. He's a freshman. You know when Maurice Smitherman went down with a torn ACL, he was he was kind of prematurely thrown in there. But you know you you learn by fire, and, and that's been the story for Emerson. Reverse it. Here's Kobe Clark. He's got some blocking help. Tavian Tumbleson is the lead blocker. Landrews with the tackle and they restrict that to just a four yard gain. The other thing is for this secondary, their coach, Terrell Buckley, but that doesn't ring, name ring a bell. Oh, for you football fans, how about a Jim Thorpe award winner in 1991, 15 year NFL career, Super Bowl champ, College Football Hall of Fame. I mean, you get to be coached by that guy as a, as a young freshman. Back in, Anthony rolling out. Fires on the run and a strike right at midfield as a completion to Justice Lee. Going to be a little short of the first down. After a five-yard gain, it'll be third and a long one. Call it two. Usually in these short yardage situations, we've seen Samaje Davis come in at running back or quarterback. They have not had success on third and short running the ball. Up the middle between Slade Anderson and Cage Hendricks, their center and right guard. This could be a bootleg or a jet sweep. And it's the jet sweep, and it's Clark who has the first down, turns up field, lowers his shoulder, and is tackled at the Mississippi State 40 yard line by Brian Cole and Jerry and Jones. Yeah, this has been their glorified short yardage play. They're just going to leave Fabian Lovett unblocked because they believe the speed sweep will out leverage him immediately, and all they got to do is pick up two yards. Get perimeter blocking, and it moves the chains. Needed two yards, got 10. Samaje Davis, they make a line change at quarterback to use a hockey term and bring the other quarterback in. Give it to Ty. Are they going to keep it? Make the handoff to Tyrese White. And Samante Davis still going. There's a late flag that comes in. You know, you got to give it to ACU tonight. Hudson, they've not backed down at all, and they are not laying down in, in, in any sense of the word. No, they haven't, and they have shown they're not intimidated by coming into, you know, SEC territory, playing on the big lights. This is their first ever Aiden national Hunter, televised game. Number 75, the offense. The penalty is five yards in spot of foul. Remain first down. Well, that's Tanner Parker, the sophomore offensive lineman tackle. I can honestly say I've never seen that call. Yeah, I'm just about to say the same thing. You see guys getting pushed from behind. Now, you can't pull them forward, but you can push them now legally. I, I see and this all the time in quarterback sneak situations, and I never uh, see it get called. You know what? He did pull them forward. Uh, uh, that's... So I guess you, you, you can, can push, push somebody from behind, you can push, but you can't pull them with you. You can push, you can't pull. <laughs> yeah. Good. It's like the doors that I run into. First down to 15. Where's the 12, call it. Happy quarterback in there. And Anthony throws it away. He was catching some heat there from Nathan Pickering. And he got a took a pretty good shot from the freshman Pickering. Yeah, Pickering's got a bright future. See him here bringing in the pressure. Bob Shoup really takes a hard hit. That's Luke. a 6'4", 315 pound yeah. true freshman. Central Luke. rounding offense number three. I didn't make it back the ball to the line of scrimmage. And includes the loss of down. 
He was still in the it's tackle box, so it does go as intentional grounding. But you're right about Pickering, who, as I mentioned, making his first career start tonight. First, I'm sure, of many in years to come. And that's the thing. You've got five starters out, two guys on that interior defensive line, Alan Love and Cam Young because of injury. You know, another guy in the Autry due to suspension. That bodes well for the future, all these young guys get reps. Good as he throws, but Anthony throws a strike to Brandon Hohenstein. This guy has four catches for 150. 15 yards tonight. Not bad for a guy that we were told wasn't going to play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Almost 29 yards a catch. Like, you know, they need him on the field. He's going back to the sideline. I think the coach was like, no, 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 man. Get back out there. Under five minutes to go, third quarter. Duke Anthony drops back. Reaching up, that's caught by Kobe Clark. Lost the football, but Finn trying to jump on it, but it goes out of bounds. So it should come back to the point of the fumble, but they're, right now they're marking where it went out. Well, I think it's because Fink touched the ball okay. last before it went out of bounds, and actually this could work. Fumble, fumble forward and went out of bounds. By rule, it will be returned to the spot of the fumble, yeah, yeah. where it will be fourth down. All right, so we'll go back to the spot where he lost it initially. You know, if Fink had touched it right before it went out of bounds, then it would have been moved up. But you can see here Kobe Clark fighting, fighting, fighting. Ball gets out. And, I, and, and he does touch it. And, and but he didn't have possession. He doesn't He's have possession of it. So now, you know, fourth down again. And it's going to fourth and seven. They failed on fourth and goal from the 10 on their first drive of the second half. One or two on fourth down tonight. This one you can certainly understand why they're going forward on fourth down from the 37. Taking a lot of time. The play clock's going to run out, but they're going to use a timeout. Timeout. ACU, first timeout of the half. So 4 5 to play third quarter with the ACU timeout. We'll take one as well. Luke Anthony brings that offense back onto the field. They're going to go forward on fourth and seven after burning their first time out of the half. From the 37-yard line of Mississippi State. Bulldogs have a 28-7 lead, 4.05 to play third quarter. Great to have you with us on this homecoming Saturday from Starkville. One and two on fourth down tonight. Anthony with time to throw. Fires Clark first down to the 20. Again, what you see is a great pocket right here. Right guard Cage Hendricks, the center Slade Anderson. Great pocket presence of Luke Anthony to step up and just buy some time and throw a strike to Colby Clark over the middle on fourth and seven. Working on a, an upperclassman right there in the secondary, Brian Cole for Mississippi State. Picked up 17 on fourth and 10. Anthony throws on first down for Tracy James, who couldn't come up with it incomplete. Evelyn Christian just keeps hanging around. You know, they just keep doing enough to hang out and hang in. And, you know, they're they're always in kind of field goal range right on the verge of, of scoring points. And they're just kind of a pesty bunch. And that's exactly what Coach Doral told his team. He said, just be pesty. Now, I got to give it to ACU. When they, when they call timeout or they have the team over on the sideline, Coach Doral and his staff, they're smiling. You can tell that they're having fun. Oh, they're loose. Anthony able to let it go and threw a fast ball that went off the hands incomplete at the 15. Going for Javorian Miller. Now Abilene is Abilene Christian has basically gone away from running the football. They they pretty much conceded in and said, if we're gonna win, we're gonna have to throw the ball. Not only because they're down 21, but they're having a lot of trouble just getting some push along the offensive line. Only 41 rushing yards. And then another third and long here where they've converted under 50%. This is the 13th play of the drive for ACU. And on third and long time for Luke Anthony. Now that time winded down and he's going to be sacked. 
Back at the 35. Sacked by Kobe Jones. Second sack of the season and a loss of 14. Yeah, and I'm not for sure if Kobe Jones might have got away with a face mask at the very end of the play. You can see trying to buy some time and watch where he puts his hands. It looked like he grabbed the face mask right there. Here comes Kobe Jones, and uh, that's a oh, face mask. You were right on it, man. Partner, you have good eyesight. So the only great attribute I have, my wife tells me. <laughs> you saw that from 300 feet, feet away. The officials apparently did not. So it's fourth and 24, and they will punt this time. It's going to land about the eight, go sideways, and be down there. 27-yard punt. Pin him in. Marty and McGee coming up Wednesday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central here on the SEC Network as well as the ESPN app. Nobody talks about Southern culture and football better than these guys. Marty and McGee. That guy does not need a jacket on what's right now about a 42 degree temperature. That's a man right there. Yep. And he's not really happy. It doesn't seem like he's very happy. I would with gladly take a fur coat up here right now. <laughs> My guy right here is just, just like he's in Daytona Beach and it's summer. State beginning at their own seven. Stevens fires. Gidry knocked around incomplete. Gidry's been targeted five times. Three of those he has dropped. One catch. Guys, more. when Tommy Stevens got transferred here from Penn State, he had some work to do. Not only did he have to win the position, he had to win the football team. Remember, Keaton Thompson had been here playing a couple years behind Nick Fitzgerald. Everyone thought he was the heir apparent. When Stevens came for scrimmages and Thompson would throw a touchdown, everyone went erupt. When Stevens would throw one, it would be token applause. Now, Thompson got hurt. Stevens won the job. As far as winning the team, before the season began, he was voted a team captain, so he did that as well. Yeah, Doc, and you know, we, we asked him about that yesterday. He said yeah, that was the one thing that really touched him. He said, I was somewhat surprised by it, certainly, that I was voted a captain so soon into the program. Stevens retreating, makes a shovel pass to Kylan Hill, and then he's wrestled out of bounds at the five, and he'll lose two. Jack Gibbons making a good play for ACU. Yeah, Gibbons comes in and almost gets the sack his knee was down right there good job by Tommy Stevens to just kind of get rid of the ball and get the best possible you know he, he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage but he prevented a, a safety and Cameron Hill is the one that almost got him right there at the goal line and it's third and 12 line to gain is the 18 They jumped. A false start. False start. Offense number 51. Half the distance to the goal. Remains third down. And they tackle Stuart Reese. Big Stu jumped a little early. You know, this offense has had a lot of success running the ball tonight. They're already over 200 yards, but in the passing game, they have not looked fluid. They haven't looked smooth. Five or three drops, you mentioned it for. Gidry, and, and I don't know what's going on with Gidry, but he's going to play an important role moving forward if this team wants to get to a bowl game and, and, and beat their rival next week. But everything in the passing game has kind of looked stagnant and, 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 and like they're not on the same page. Four penalties for 30 yards now. And it's kept by Stevens. And Stevens down the sideline. Steps out at the 33 to first down and a long run of Stevens that goes for 30 yards. Yeah, Jeremiah Chambers, some of these, they bring a corner blitz here. Alex Lofton and, you know, it's funny because it's the front side blocks that lead to first downs and it's kind of these backside blocks along this offensive line for Mississippi State that have created gash plays in the run game. And you can see there for Tommy Stevens almost eclipsing 100 yards rushing. Last week, 96 yards against Alabama on the ground. Kylan Hill kicks it outside. Takes it all the way up near midfield. Another first down run is 17 yards for Hill. And a nice block on the edge from LeQuinston Sharp, the right guard. Yeah, I, I know Coach Moorhead didn't plan and intend to have him in the game this late. We talked about a pitch count from him, but... Uh, 
Once again, there is a flag. He's tackled at the 39. Jack Gibbons, Gabe Ortega there. 11 yard gain. We'll see about the flag. Holding on the offense, number 18. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. It's on receiver Cameron Gardner. See just that slight little ever pull right there, that yank. Kind of outside. Out there, though. But it yes. was enough. It's uh, what you call ticky tack. See if they're going to get a snap off before this third quarter comes to an end. Just in time, and this will be the final play of the quarter and a run for Gibson to the 47 yard line. Gate is six at the end of three, 28 7 state. Let's take you around the SEC from today. LSU beat Arkansas, so you got LSU Georgia coming up in the SEC title game. Georgia, really good game, held off Texas AM. Bama won big, as did Vandy Auburn. And Kentucky against FCS teams. And an FCS team, FCS team here. ACUs. Making it tough with Mississippi State as we begin the fourth quarter. Only scoring in the third quarter was the Tommy Stevens 30 yard touchdown run for Mississippi State. Goes on first down for Rod Green on second down. It should say Green broke one tackle, leads to the 40 and should have the first down. And then Broussard brings, brings him down. Say he's a little short. So third and about the length of the football. And off, Highland Hill straight ahead. A little spin move. Still going across the 25 to the 24 yard line. Wrapped up by Jack Gibbons. It's a 17 yard run for Hills. Over 150 rushing yards now. Yeah, some of it has come after contact, but a lot of it has just been this tremendous amount of push that. Daryl Williams at center, Stuart Reese at right tackle, Sharp at right guard have been getting ever since this defense lost Iagoro and Utsusimi. Missing guys interior. Off the hands green. Well, here we are a minute into the fourth quarter. The starters are still in the game for Mississippi State. Yep. They're five days away from hosting the Egg Bowl here against Ole Miss. What's yeah. Joel Moorhead thinking right now besides trying to finish off this win? I would imagine a touchdown and a lot of these starters you'll see come out. What are the Ole Miss fans thinking that are watching right now? Huh. Come on, Abilene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they are. Stevens deflected incomplete. It's Jack Gibbons who had a chance to pick that off. Green was the intended receiver. The ball never got close to him. And it went straight through Jack Gibbons' hands. You'll see his, the, the toss sweep here makes him pause for just a second. And Tommy Stevens just needs to put a little bit more air under it. Throws it a bit too flat. He's got Green as tight end. Maybe have walked into the end zone. Gibbons has a couple of picks on the season. Ten tackles tonight. Third and ten. It's a hill. Trying to find the edge, but you can't. Hit hard. For just a four-yard gain by Jack Gibbons. Hills needing a little lift up. His teammate, Dante Jones. Fourth down. Going to bring out Jace Crispin to attempt the field goal. 40 yards off the right hash. Christmas long this year is 51. That came at Tennessee. A game that Mississippi State lost 20 to 10. One of those games that Mississippi State looks back at. I think that game and the K State game, the two that they look at, like, like the games that they really needed to win. That's straight through. A 40 yard field goal for Christman. Makes it 31 7. Not quite two minutes into quarter number four. 
The Egg Bowl, very, very big. I had several guys, hey, it's Egg Bowl week. Yeah, it's, it's Mississippi State. There's the kick. It turns. It is Jumper. If you want it, go get it. This is bigger than all of those rivalries. It is neighbor against neighbor. I think everybody in this state takes this game extremely seriously. Now Thanksgiving night, 6.30, the Egg Bowl right on this very field. ESPN, 7.30 Eastern. Five days away from another edition of the Egg Bowl. This is going to be brought out of the end zone by Ryan Stapp. That makes a move at the 20. Spun down at the 30. Doc, I know you have been a part of many Egg Bowls. <laughs> Tell me about the Egg Bowl and the origination of that great name. Yeah, the Egg Bowl trophy was introduced in 1927. It seems the year before Ole Miss had uh, won, snapping a 13-game losing streak. Their fans tried to tear down the goalpost, but Mississippi State got upset, and a chair-throwing brawl broke out. A year later, they decided, well, we just have a trophy to give the winning team and avoid the scuffles. And a trophy was designed to be a regulation-sized gold-plated football, which was nicknamed the Golden Egg. Thus, they played the battle for the Golden Egg, and now it's called the Egg Bowl. So much fun it is. Here's a pass. It's going to go incomplete for Luke Anthony. Doc, do you know off the top of your head how many Egg Bowls you've been a part of throughout the years? I think I've done six or seven. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the one that I really remember the most, 2007, here at Mississippi State, they call it the Comeback Bowl. They trailed 14 to nothing with eight minutes to play. And a head coach at Ole Miss by the name of Ed Orgeron had the ball uh, on their own 49-yard line, opted to go for it. His running back, Ben Jarvis Green-Ellis, didn't make it. He got stopped. And uh, suddenly Mississippi State goes down and scores, gets momentum, and comes back and wins it 17-14. And guess what? Ed Orgeron was fired that year because he went 0-8 in the SEC in 2007. And now 12 years later, looks like he may go 8-0 in the SEC yeah. as another head coach. Interesting story. And what an unusual play we just saw. With <laughs> I'm going I'm to say something. Coach Durrell said the, the, the goal coming into the game was a make sports center. I that, think that, that just have. made sports center. One of the ACU players just stretching on the sideline. Caught that. There's a flag. Luke Anthony is going to throw deep down the middle, waiting on it. Clark. And incomplete. Offside, we'll the... defense number five, five yard penalty, repeat third down. All right, let's go back two plays ago when Luke Anthony throws this across the field. Just sails it out of bounds. <laughs> and. Okay, what number and who is that? Because. They might need to put him at wire. Is that some Andre Davis? Nope. That's oh. uh, Brandon Hill, a cornerback who was getting stretched out. It's impressive. Number 43. <laughs> He's just in the right place, I guess, at the right time. Maybe that will indeed make Sports Center. There is a Mississippi State player getting helped up, but let's take a quick timeout. Make the Egg Bowl part of your Thanksgiving night. That's on ESPN, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. And the football power index right now giving Mississippi State a 65% chance to win that game. Which Mississippi State won last year in Oxford, 35-3. Ole Miss won here two years ago in a game that Nick Fitzgerald broke his ankle in the late rally, fell short for State. Ole Miss won that one 31-28 two years ago. Third down and five, completion to Tracy James. Mark him out, mark him down at the 37. It'll be fourth and about three. Sean Preston Jr. on the tackle. I thought he's played nice tonight. You know, he had the one play early in the game where he slipped and could have potentially given up a big play for a touchdown, but Luke Anthony overthrew Kobe Clark. But other than that, I thought some of these freshman players, Martin Emerson, Sean Preston, Jerry and Jones has played quite a bit tonight. They've all they've all done nice and, and played well. Well, here's ACU going for it on fourth down and three from their own 37-yard line. Anthony throws for James, and he caught it. Was he inbounds? Yes. First down at the 49 at Mississippi State. 
Nice balancing act and catch by Tracy James on the well, sideline. Uh, that is Sean or Chauncey Rivers that he's got a matchup on. And that's absolutely a catch by Tracy James. Drops the ball right in the bucket. Look at that athletic running back, Tracy James, at 222 pounds. Go up and climb the ladder and grab that. Well, from that angle we just saw, it looked like it took him a little bit to complete the catch. And he might have stepped out before he did so. ACU might be wise to quickly get to the line and snap this. And they do. There's a running for Tyrese White. To the 36 and another first down. He runs for 14. And a former Army commit, Tyrese White, who he pulled a guard, pulled a tackle, and Chauncey Rivers loses contain and pick up of 10 plus. You mentioned originally committed to Army, and that's the right word. I mean, they talk about players committing to different schools. When you go to Army yeah. or Air Force, that's a commitment. There's a pass deflected and intercepted. Fred Peters. A flag coming down way back at the 35 of Mississippi State before Peters is taken out of bounds at the 26 of ACU. First interception of the year for junior Fred Peters. The flag came during return out. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 10. The receiving team, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Linebacker Leo Lewis called for the blind side black. That's a point of emphasis this year. Yeah. Luke Anthony's going to throw a slant route. It's going to hit Kobe Clark a little high. You know, with the Mike linebacker, or Tim Washington pushing right there, that ball's got to be more in the chest of the receiver of Kobe Clark. But Fred Peters. Predominantly played that backup nickel Sam position behind Cole. There's a illegal blind, you know, crackback block that they've eliminated now in college football to make the game more safe. So that takes it all the way back to the 20 of Mississippi State. And now Garrett Schrader comes in at quarterback for the first time. So it looks like Tommy Stevens night is done with over 10 and a half minutes to play in this fourth quarter. Gibson is in there as well. It's kept by Schrader. Garrett Schrader, true freshman, who due to the incidents this year where Stevens has gotten banged up, couldn't play at times, has played now now in his ninth game, made three start, freshman out of Charlotte. Yeah, this kid's got a, uh, an, an interesting story. Uh, Coach Moorhead got on him early in the recruiting process at Penn State, and it's one of the reasons why they got him here. He's a three-time state champ in high school, and Coach described him as eccentric. And very confident. There's Schrader running up to the to the 30. And, and, and Doc, yeah, I mean, you have some ties down to North Carolina. You've heard a lot of folks down there high on Schrader. Absolutely. He went to Charlotte Christian High School, the same high school that gave us two-time NBA MVP Steph Curry. A lot of good athletes at that high school. There are coaches, high school and college in North Carolina, who say this may be the best young quarterback coming out of the Tar Heel State in over a decade. That is high praise, Gibson. First down to the 35, but the ball came out. We got it back. Staying with Mississippi State. That was Adonis Davis. It looked like he forced the fumble. That's extremely high praise, knowing the amount of quarterbacks that have come out of that Charlotte area. Chris Leak being one of them. We went to Florida. A lot of really good quarterbacks that have come out of that suburb Charlotte area. First down state from the 35. Lee Witherspoon, who freshman now has checked in at running back for the first time. They fake the handoff to him, throw a little bit low, but it is caught. But Austin Williams who makes his first catch of the night. Immediately tackled for no gain. You know, I thought it was interesting. Coach Moorhead told us this week that uh, Garrett kind of hit the freshman wall around the Tennessee game. And what coach means by that is, you know, it's kind of information overload for the first couple months with freshmen. You know, they get that deer and that headlight look. And, you know, Garrett had to play because of the injury to Tommy a little sooner than probably wanted to. I think in the ideal situation, they would have redshirted him this year. But uh, he's extremely athletic, and, and I think his skill set is a lot like what they're looking for here. Looks like he was going to run. Now, Will. 
the ball forward for a couple yards. And Coach Moore had told us yesterday that Garrett Schrader is right on the borderline between confident and, and cocky. All right, but he said, and Coach Moore had said, that's exactly where you want your quarterbacks. You don't want them to be too far over that line. And Garrett Schrader straddles that well. And by the way, the beard is really going for him. I'll tell you what, that's Ryan Fitzpatrick S. Yeah. Third down and eight. These are the downs we really get to see about the future of Mississippi State football, about the right arm of Garrett Schrader, too. The pressure off the edge. Schrader stepping up now. Elects to run. Well, that spin move is going to help him get a first down. Up to the 45. Gain of eight. Well, he's got over 500 yards rushing this season, and that's really his, his greatest strength is when that internal clock goes off, he's able to do some things with his legs that most quarterbacks aren't able to. See the spin move there, and, you know, he, he, he doesn't know this whole offense yet. Coach Moorhead said that. But I think the situation in the, the hand that he's been dealt this year, he's come in, and, and he's handled the role nicely. He's keeping once again and another first down run of 13. More from Doc. Yes, Schrader uh, was had over 35 major college offers, according to the papers in North Carolina, and it came down to Penn State, Mississippi State, and South Carolina. He went to Penn State twice to visit. Joe Moorhead was there. He thought maybe he would commit there, and then Moorhead leaves and becomes the head coach here at Mississippi State, and he commits here. But why did he get all the offers? Well, he went to a camp, a quarterback camp, and apparently there they did a laser-tested uh, 4.740 yard dash, and he also had a 36 inch vertical leap. So uh, pretty impressive for a young man. That's why he was so highly recruited. Outstanding. Clock stop was 7.02 to play and an ACU player down. Bolu Onafade was the player down for ACU. He's off under his own power. First down here for Mississippi State. Clock starts to roll again with under seven minutes to play fourth quarter. 31-7 state leading. Garrett Schrader, the true freshman, steps up. He'll take off running once again. Use the official as a good of a screen. Comes toward the sideline and steps out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And you notice the black jerseys. It's a blackout tonight for Mississippi State. They're called the selfless uniforms. They're recognizing Mississippi State's T.K. Martin Center for Technology and Disability. The T.K. Martin Center assists children with disabilities those black uniforms being worn for the first time this year, they're being sold to fans, and all the proceeds go to the TK Martin Center, part of the blackout night tonight. The Nick Gibson run for the 19-yard line, nine-yard game. And all the proceeds on those jersey sales helping out an outstanding part of the campus here, TK Martin Center for Technology and Disability. Gibson comes off. Lee Witherspoon takes a spot. Witherspoon gets his first carry of the night. He bounces it all the way down to the six. His 18th carry of the year, playing in his ninth game, 13-yard game for the true freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, they're high on this kid, Witherspoon. He only played one year of running back in high school and had a great standout year from the Birmingham, Alabama uh, area. But with the future still up in the air of, of Kylan Hill and Nick Gibson, they're going to lose the graduation, which Moorhead described Lee Weatherspoon as special. Abilene Christian uses a timeout. They use their second. 5.23 to play in Starkville on a homecoming Saturday. ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. 5.23 to go. A first and goal for Mississippi State. They have 354 rushing yards tonight, so that's game number six on the year for them with 300 plus yards, which is tops in the conference since last year. 
I thought they were going to get to two, having two rushers eclipse the 100-yard mark. They've already done that twice this year in the Kentucky and Arkansas game, but Simmons came out early. Stevens. Schrader, touchdown pass to Austin Williams. Eight touchdown pass of the year for Garrett Schrader. Second touchdown catch for Williams. Yeah, it's just a simple fade route. Schrader gets the ball out early, puts, puts good trajectory under it. Inside slot fade, and just a great job of giving your receiver a chance to go make the ball or go make the catch, and that's the beauty about an underthrow. Never overthrow your receiver, always give him a chance to go make the play. 11 play, 80-yard drive. 38-7. Schrader throws the fader out to Williams. Mississippi State up big. Mississippi State's opened up a 38-7 lead over Abilene Christian. 5-16 to go, fourth quarter from Starkville. This SEC Saturday Night Football. Five nights away from the Egg Bowl here on Thanksgiving night. Ole Miss, Mississippi State. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ESPN. That's your only college football game of the night. Fair catch called for by Stapp. It'll come out to the 25. Coming up Friday, we got a men's hoops double header for you here on the SEC Network, as well as the ESPN app. Number nine, Kentucky, hosted UAB at Rupp Arena. That's the first game, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then off to Gainesville, Marshall, and Florida. It's Friday night here on the SEC Network. Abilene Christian University, FCS school out of the Southland Conference, playing their final game of the season. 20 seniors playing their final game. There's a senior, a 21st, Billy McCrary, who not, did not make the trip, who got hurt earlier this season. Looks like he'll be able to get a red shirt and come back next year. So 20 playing their final game. This is Tyrese White. Abilene Christian in school in their NAIA days won a couple of the national championships. One in 1973, one in 1977. They went to Division II, made six consecutive playoffs from 2006 to 11, now at the FCS level. And trying to make it to the FCS playoffs for the first time. Came up a little short last year, lost their final game of the season to Central Arkansas. And this year, Felt like they were in the mix, but they lost their last two games prior to this one to Sam Houston State, Southeastern Louisiana. Luke Anthony on the run, will tuck it away and slide down at the 31. Thought Luke played well tonight. You know, he uh, the game kind of got away from him when they weren't able to run the football, and he had to throw the ball 36 times tonight. But he was efficient all the way through the game, threw for 235 yards up until this point. The two interceptions hurt. Uh, the one most recently that, you know, was a little bit of a high ball on a slant route over the middle to Kobe Clark, and it was picked off. But I thought all the way through the night he, he was composed. His offensive line gave him enough time to, uh, to distribute the ball, and he made some nice throws all across the field. Anthony pressure, flushed out, and then we'll throw it away. Luke Anthony, he was from Dallas. Grew up a Cowboy fan, said his family had season tickets to the Cowboys. He recently passed Clint Longley for seventh place on the Abilene Christian career passing list. Of course, Clint Longley, well known for his Thanksgiving Day win for the Cowboys over the Redskins. He came into a game in the 1970s when Roger Staubach got hurt. It was in 1974, Thanksgiving Day. Punt. Fair catch made at the 38 by Dedrick Thomas. Dr. Jerry Punch down below with a. You've, you've had an interesting weekend here, Doc. Yeah, special guest here, Dr. Alan Seals, who is the chief medical officer for the National Football League, also a uh, professor of neuro and orthopedic surgery at Vanderbilt. Now, I know normally 
in the NFL, you have to be neutral tonight. You're not very neutral. Now, what are, you, what are your ties to Mississippi State? That's exactly right. I'm not neutral tonight. This is home. So I grew up here in Starkville and uh, graduated of Mississippi State, and I've been the uh, team neurosurgeon for about 20 years. You started the Vanderbilt Concussion Center, and uh, that's really a lot of what you do in your life as a, as a chief medical officer. Where do you think we've made the most progress in diagnosis and treatment of concussion? I think we're much more aware of the injury, and so we've got a culture where people are quicker to report the injury, and we understand about keeping players out until they're fully healed. And I think we've also worked a lot to change the rules of the game to reduce head contact. You know, from a, from, from a medical standpoint, you know, we talk about all the risks in, in all kinds of sports, but what's the biggest uh, risk we, we face today in terms of where we are in uh, football, college, or NFL? I think it's continuing to get head contact out of the game at all levels and really understanding that how we teach and coach the game has a huge impact on that. We can make helmets safer. We can change the rules, but but it's all about how we play the game and, and how we practice also. I think practice is a huge part of it, how much contact we allow and, and how we train players to hit each other. I know there's a lot of NCAAs involved with a lot of colleges on limiting contact in practice. Are you doing the same with regard to what you're allowed to, to advise people with in the NFL? Yeah, we only have about 12 contact practices during the entire season, so our players really don't hit a lot in practice, and that's been a, an important part of us reducing that injury throughout the season. Prior to the request for a challenge, the officiating crew was notified by the replay booth that the previous play is under review. Ruling on the field was a catch. We're going to look at the uh, catch. It was ruled a catch for Javante Payton at 34 yards. Go back to Dr. Sills here in just a moment. Did he complete the catch and keep it from the ground? Hard to tell. We're going to get a much better view from, from this angle. I think it's going to come down to did he, did he control it all the way through, and, and really did he did he use the ground to trap it? I haven't seen anything that would overturn the call. Uh, right there, that's kind of hard to did tell. He, if it's, did he, They had the hand under it, though. Yeah, right. It can touch the ground, but as you said, you can't use it to, to complete the catch. Take another peek. <laughs> From this side, as his body turns, is the hand underneath the football there? I mean, it looks like it to me there. I mean, that, yeah. it looks like he controlled it all the way through the catch. And we have Matt Austin in our Charlotte office uh, taking a look at this. Matt, what, what, what do you see? Yeah, Mark, it looks like he, he originally had the ball. He lost it on the way to the ground. He got a hold of it again, and then as he rolled over, it does look like the ball touched the ground, but the key is for the replay officials, did he lose possession of the ball, or did the ground help him make the catch? And if you, you think so, it has to be indisputable. So the ruling on the field is a catch, so it has to be clear and obvious that he did not for it to be overturned. Have you seen anything that would overturn this? I, I can't, not that I've seen yet yeah. so far, no. no I, I don't think we have either. Appreciate that very much. Uh, thanks, Matt. And uh, I, I mentioned, Jerry Punch, you've had a good weekend because you've, you've been able to catch up with great friends, old friends of yours like Dr. Sills there, and we appreciate your conversation with him. Yeah, we've had a good time. I want to ask you before I let you go. After we had the review, building on the field stands. It's first down. The, the call stands. Jerry? We've seen how... A lot of the data we've gotten from some of the head injuries that have, have changed the rules. We are just targeting. We're very much on top of what happens in targeting. What's next? What would you like to see change, or what, what kind of data to make the sport safer? Yeah, well, we always say there's no finish line to health and safety, and so we know that even though we've made a, a, a tremendous amount of progress on concussion, we've still got more work to do. So we'll continue to work with our rules committee about how we can eliminate head contact, and we're also working a lot on lower extremity injuries, trying to reduce those as well. Hey, Dr. Seals, thank you so much. Great to have you here tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dr. Alan Seals, the chief medical officer for the National Football League, and has family here, has an office in New York, and obviously a very busy man. Uh, willing to spend a little bit of time talking about what's the leading edge now in terms of uh, research in sports injury. Personal foul, horse Great. guard tackle, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Great conversation. Thanks, Doc. And there's the personal foul and the run by Schrader. If he's in, if he's in. The horse collar from Raynell Prevalon. Mississippi State on the move again. And they have a first to goal from the 10 yard line. Black starts to roll again with three minutes to go here at Starkville. Yeah. 
Schrader sees some open ground, and he runs into the end zone. Touchdown. His fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Well, they send five receivers out in the pattern. And he goes to his progression, that internal clock goes off, and there's really nobody left because they're all in man coverage to account for Schrader. He rushes 65 yards for Garrett Schrader. You certainly can sense that moxie he plays with. Yeah, I, I think the future is bright for him because you see what he brings to the table as a runner, and obviously that's a natural fit in this offense. Everything moving forward with him is going to be about his development as a passer. You know, you've seen him make many plays already tonight with his legs. And this is a, this is a trait you can't coach. I mean, you either have that skill set to, to just make plays and be an athlete or you don't. But I think just like kind of what we're seeing with Tommy Stevens is in the SEC, when you play against in, in this conference, the best in America, you know, teams are really good at kind of figuring out your strengths. So you, when they've made Mississippi State one dimensional and made them throw the ball this year, they've kind of struggled. Garrett Schrader's a guy who at one point in his prep career was an offensive lineman. <laughs> it's a quarterback. I think Mississippi State, too, needs a – they need a guy to be around for a couple of years, you know, to – that they've groomed and, you know, like Dak Prescott. He was – I'm not saying he has to be Dak Prescott, but just, you know, somebody that can provide stability at that position. They, they don't – I know sometimes you go and you kind of get a Band-Aid fix. You get a guy through the transfer portal or, you know, a guy like Tommy Stevens. That's not meant to be a knock at all, but those guys are short-term answers. I think Mississippi State is hoping that they've got a long-term answer in Garrett Trader, and he's going to be here another three years. Catch called for and taken at the five by Ryan Stapp. They're coming up tonight after the Tennessee-Missouri game. The SEC Now team will recap all the games with highlights, analysis, interviews, and everything else. 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Obviously, we're uh, a little past that time now, but uh, it's coming up after the game. <laughs> You mentioned Dak Prescott, who was one and two in the Egg Bowl against Ole Miss. His three tries won an overtime game. Dak has a big game this weekend, doesn't he? He does indeed. The Patriots. And the move, Luke Anthony. Run out of bounds at the 28. Take a look at a couple of the quarterbacks that have played a part of the Egg Bowl. One is Eli Manning, who went two and one in his three tries. But what really sticks out there is Eli Manning had a rushing touchdown <laughs> in an Egg Bowl. Do we know how long? Because, look, I had four <laughs> rushing touchdowns my senior year, but there were four quarterbacks in each. All right? I'm not for sure if those count. Looking forward to the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night. Samaj Davis. I mean, four rushing touchdowns for me, that, that's on the verge of I should be considered dual threat. <laughs> Just two minutes to go. Samaj Davis come back out of the game. We had a great conversation with Samaj Davis last night. It's, that's Kate Parmalee who's down. And Samaj Davis was telling us that he was an option quarterback through his junior year at Midland Lee High School. And then his senior year, they had a coaching change, and they went to a spread offense. Yeah, a triple option his junior yeah. year to spread option. And, and so, really, this kid has not been able to throw the ball a lot. You know, he's still young as a thrower of the football. And so, you know, as only a sophomore, his ceiling's really high. And, and I, you know, what you saw this year is when he got a chance to step in and start when Luke Anthony went down, you know, those, those reps were vital to his progression as a, as a quarterback. Born and raised in Midland, Midland Lee High School. Of course, the great rivalry with 
Odessa Permian and Midland High School. Great high school football. Obviously, the Friday night lights. You from Midland? Midland, Texas. That's a great movie, man. Yeah, awesome. One of the great football movies, no doubt. Booby Miles. Normally, no tough, and the clock will restart on a third and three now for ACU. It's a pass to the near side, Kobe Clark pushed out of bounds at the 38. Evelyn Christian's season will come to an end. They'll be five and seven. They went four and five in the Southland Conference and dropped their last three games, but they will. They're playing an SEC team for the first time in their school history. And they're going to play Texas A&M to start next season in College Station. So they're going to play back-to-back -back games against the SEC but just over two different seasons. And Samaje Davis thrown to the ground by Fred Peters. And you know what's next for Mississippi State? And as soon as, as Joe Moore had said, as soon as the clock goes to zeros, the preparation yeah. officially begins for Ole Miss. But I have a sneaking suspicion that there yeah. was at least some preparation done this week. Yeah, I think even though they were focused on ACU. Yeah, yeah, I think unofficially it started early. And I don't mean by the coaches, but you had graduate assistants, quality control already breaking down tape. Luke Anthony flushed out, rolls out, fires a strike to midfield, and a first down there after the catch by Josh Fink. Coach Moorhead said, look, we're not even really going to have enough time to, to watch the tape with the players. They're going to watch it on their iPads at home, and we'll give them the great sheets. But, you know, they're going to have a staff meeting first thing in the morning at 7 a.m. and start to turn their attention. They're going to spend all day tomorrow game planning for, uh, for Ole Miss. This is a quick, quick turnaround. It was funny. You know, he said, I don't know how these guys do it in the NFL playing Thursday night football games. Loose ball. And it is picked up, I believe, by Tanner Parker of ACU. He was knocked out by Fred Peters. Fred Peters, big nine as a backup. Got an interception earlier in the fourth quarter and a forced fumble there. Six seconds ticking down. Mississippi State will improve to five and six. And still maintain a chance to make bowl eligibility with a win over that's Ole just Miss. a mismatch all day. Fred Peters blitzing, working on a backup tight end. And they're not even going to snap it. Time will run out. Great effort from Adam Girl's team. Abilene Christian. They fall here in Starkville. Mississippi State wins it 45-7. And the Egg Bowl is next for Joe Moorhead's Mississippi State Bulldogs on Thanksgiving night. Again, Mississippi State, not only is it the Egg Bowl on Thursday, but they need a win to become bowl eligible for the 10th consecutive season. Ole Miss, that will be their final game of the season. And Doc has coach. Hey, coach, second half, the offense seemed to get on track and began to move for almost effortlessly. What was the difference? Uh, we got clicking. We started executing. I think we were doing a little better job up front in the run game and protecting. I uh, thought we did a little better job getting open, uh, completing the ball with a little more accuracy, caught it a little better. I thought all of our running backs ran with great pad level. You talked to us yesterday. You've got a lot of work to do in the next four or five days. Five days from now, the Egg Bowl, four a bowl. What's your top priority? Uh, I'm going to go in, address the team, go to the press conference, and then get to work. Hey, congratulations. We'll let you go. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Thanks, Doc. Probably won't be a whole lot of sleep for Joe Moorhead and his <laughs> staff tonight or for uh, the next four nights. No, not at all. That's going to take care of things from here in Starkville. Fun game tonight. As Mississippi State wins it over Abilene Christian by a final of 45-7. Don't forget the Egg Bowl's coming up on ESPN Thanksgiving night, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. For Hudson Mason, Dr. Jerry Punch, and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. Good night from Starkville.